All right, guys, welcome down to the River X again. Um, you're going to see shortly that we're not on our own. The bullocks are back in the field, so I had to do a little bit of a detour to get to my entry point to the river because they're a little bit too inquisitive. And I'm sure they're harmless, but there's more of them than there is of me. I'm not going to do a long intro. Um, I have been fishing a couple of times since the last video. Down here twice, I got a couple of fish not a great deal to shout about unfortunately we've had more rain as you know um, and i've also been to our brook pond absolutely hammered it down cue clip of me drowning while standing on the lake bank right so as you can see i did try to catch some carp i was there all day and i was close to getting pneumonia and uh, got nothing I've been to uh, another pond this morning uh, trying to get some more carp on pellets but for my uh, efforts all I managed to get was uh, a bream. Q bream. There you go. Not what I was after. I was after a little carp. But I got a bream. It's not a bad size one. I was going to hook him in the water but I thought he wasn't a bad one so I thought I'd show him off. Blah. Slimy bream. Okay, it wasn't a bad size bream, but it wasn't what I was after. And while I was sat there, I was only at Sanford Ponds, which is about 10 minutes away from the river. It's a lovely day. The temperatures are starting to creep up, but also uh, we haven't had rain, heavy rain, uh, for a few days. So I knew the level would be dropping and I checked on the app I use, River App which gives me all the, uh, the depths uh, of the uh, various rivers. And I check there to see what the X is doing. Dropping, so the level's dropping nicely. And with the temperature coming up, there has been a hatch. Um, and on the way down here, there was a few rises. Not where I've come into the river, but what I intend to do is to not spend too long in any particular spot, um, because I haven't got very long. Uh, I've been tasked with cooking tea tonight. The reason being is because I once cooked chicken and chorizo paella and apparently that's now my speciality so when the missus wants that I have to cook it I don't quite know how it works you cook something once and it's your speciality but anyway so I'm cooking tea so it means I haven't got long down on the river so all right let's get fly fishing Well, as usual, guys, my, uh, my fly is exactly what I'd normally use, the Alcare Caddis. I did do a little video explaining why I'm using the Alcare Caddis, but I didn't publish it because uh, it was shocking. Um, but I use it because it's a stimulator. Very, very buoyant. And with the use of uh, floatant powder, I can easily manipulate it on the surface, skip it, twitch it. So any trout which aren't particularly rising will see that movement. And remember, trout are predatory. They don't have much opportunity to decide what's food and what's not. So if something's moving and looks alive, there's a good chance they're gonna take it. As far as floatants go, I use um, Weatherbiz dry fly powder. I use a powder based floatant because powders make the fly ride higher on the water surface, on the film. Whereas I find that um, 
oils and gels will make the fly sit in the surface. So it's not so easy for me to introduce these twitches. My casting's pretty shocking at the moment though. And also I find with those uh, gels and oils, they do make the feathers and the hackle and whatever it may be, stick together. And that isn't the fly that was tied and that I bought. I want a fly that maintains its uh, integrity, if you like, its design. That's a bit of cast. But whenever I say that, I never get the rise. Trout don't appreciate a good cast, do they? Also, a guy's contacted me recently asking me some questions and I'm more than happy to answer them. But I thought I'll just stick them in a video. Oh, that's too much powder. I attached my fly, there's my fly. Our care caddis, big old thing. I attached my fly using a five turn blood nut. I attached my tippet using a perfection loop to my leader. And today I'm using a 5X tippet. So that was a cork and cast. I say, I've not seen anything rising in this stretch, they're all further upstream, but I've had a few fish from down here, so I just wanted to see if I could entice anything up. Oh, typical, now I'm down on the river, a breeze has kicked up. Yeah, the river's getting to a nice depth now, nice and comfortable to wade in. It's not a weight loss plan raiding through it anymore. Oh, and it deserves a fish for getting underneath that branch. Nope, right, let's dry them off. So the plan is to move quite quickly up the river, stopping in a couple of areas. I hope there's bullocks move out of the way. There you go. Hope you can see those. Don't want to get one of those on the back cast. That would be a heck of a, a take. Oh, also guys, apologies those who watched uh, my last video. The quality was uh, shocking. Um, I hadn't checked it before I published it, so I didn't realise I'd uploaded it in the wrong settings. So uh, yeah, apologies about that. And also the audio was pretty rubbish as well. Um, I've actually spent five minutes looking for the mic this time, which gets rid of that annoying clicking I get all the time from casting and moving around. Nothing's coming up. I probably should be trying to have uh, a nymph on the drop underneath the fly but I like focusing on one fly at a time and as you guys know who watch my videos I'm a dry fly enthusiast it's not about numbers for me or size of the fish it's the actual using the dry fly to induce a take
Not that I'm being very successful at the minute. This is my deep hole that I have to try and avoid walking into. I find myself a decent spot to get as close as I can to that eddy over there. These stones are very... They're moving around a lot under my foot. They're not very solid for me to stand on. Whoa, there we go, there's a deeper bit. Well, it's still close and I've been able to stand to it in a while. So I should be able to keep my as much fly line off the water as possible. Right, let's see. Thing. Oh, there's a little trout. <laughs> right, I think that might be a grayling shoal. Those takes. Very gentle. And it's unusual for me to miss two in a row like that. There we go. I knew that to be one there in the end. Ah! Oh! I was. We lost him. All right, let's move up to the next spot. Oh, is that like my first lost fly? Yes. Yes, it is.
So there's a perfection loop in the end of the tippet. Feed it through the leader loop. And there we go. Let's cut that tag off. Put that in my bag. Oh, there's a fly, but it just needs its barb snipping out. So there's my fly on my tippet. Five turns. Two, three, four, five. One for good luck. It's mono, so just wet it, pulling it down. Snip that tag off, put that in my bag. You know, I mentioned it's still got its barb, so it's going to debarb that. So it's easier for catch and release, or as I seem to be doing at the moment, long distance release. There you go. Still nothing rising over there that I've seen. There's quite a few naturals coming up. Good old painting of floating powder. Right, we're back fishing. Get tangles already. All right, sinking already. First coat of, uh, first application of powder isn't the best, it's always the next one. Well, it's always the uh, first one's always the weakest, but then when you give your fly a little dry on the patch, this is the one that really adheres to the, the materials. Right, this little lady must hold some trout. Are they looking up? Oh, I'm getting a little bit too close. Nope. 
Oh, today isn't being as successful as I thought it was going to be. Oh, I thought that was a nice fish, the way it took that. Very aggressive. Ah! Oopsie daisy. Ah, two for two. And again, that wasn't a rising fish, it was one I got up because of twitching the fly. Ugh. Damn, I'm going to get another over there, but the normal there is a one, at least lying over under that branch. God, I can't believe I lost that, that was a nice fish. annoyed me oh fly fishing's relaxing no when you lose a fish like that it's not Guys, I'm up in the uh, slower section. Oh, stumble. Where I did see that rising fish. Well, not quite here, but I'm going to try all along that far margin just to see if I can get fish to rise. lovely and clear. Casting's not ideal. I'm not having to fight the flow anymore which is a nice change. Oh. Just the wind. So almost at the end of my trip down here today. I know if I hook one here it could be a nicer sized fish.
Just being a little careful with my wading. Get a couple of deeper dips around here. I'm an idiot. Yeah, that was a rise and I just missed it. Oh, this has turned into a shocker of a trip to the river. Oh, don't fall over. I'll just add to my woes. Ah! Oh, I could do with at least one fish to show you guys, couldn't I? That'd be nice. And it'd be nice from this stretch as well because I've had nothing from here yet this year. Um, that was the first rise I've had up here. Well, to be honest, I haven't really tried because it's been too deep to wade here. There we go. No, he's off. <gasps> oh, man. He's a little one. Blue's a brownie. Oh, I'm loving how clear the river is, though. It's obviously helping me because they can see the fly. I'm going to invest in some new flies, I think. Flies are the sticky sharp. Right, time is almost up guys. Right, time is almost up guys. I'm almost out of the river. And I've got to get home to cook the chorizo. Chicken and, well, chicken and chorizo paella.
<gasps> Seen the Holy Grail, guys. Fish fries. Is this one going to stay on? I've got a little line around my arm. <laughs> and the camera. Oh. Well, we worked hard for that, guys. Teamwork, obviously. Look at that. Lovely little brownie. Our care caddis in his mouth. Give me the hook back. All right, guys, high five me and you. We worked really hard for that fish. <laughs>